Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mario back again for another trade video. How are you guys doing? Uh, I know it's been a couple days. I did take a couple days off from trading because of the holidays. I hope you guys enjoyed your Christmas or whatever holiday you, you uh, celebrate. Now, I am going to go over some day trades that I made. I day traded Neo stock. I also day traded Alibaba stock as well as Airbnb stock. I'm going to go over those, all those trades, ins and outs, what was I thinking, why did I day trade, and all of it. Uh, now, I'm also going to cover NEO because there is a very good opportunity for a swing trade as well as a long-term investment on NEO. The way it's set up, the volume that's coming in, the whole EV sector, the electronic vehicle sector, including Tesla, they're all moving. So things are looking really good. So I'm going to talk about that, okay, uh, in this video. So uh, again, uh, if just so you guys know, I am not a licensed financial advisor. These videos are made for entertainment and learning purposes only. Now, so don't, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel down below. Let me share my screen and let's get started. All right. So let's uh, kind of go over Neil, first of all. So... Neo, why did I want to day trade Neo? Um, the reason why is because just how beautiful the daily chart looks like. Now, this is a uh, six months daily chart. Let me kind of zoom in for a three month daily chart. If you guys can see, it's been just pretty much trending. Actually, kind of go over a year. It's just been trending just amazingly, like doubling, tripling, and like in the last year. And that trend is, does not look like it's gonna end anytime soon. Um, if uh, you look at what's happening recently, the 42 level has been holding support. Um, it kind of tested it once, twice, three times yesterday, and today it took off. And not only that, but if you uh, look at the 50-day moving average, it finally caught up. And if you look at what's happening in terms of the uh, pattern it's forming, it's, it's forming a wedge, a bull flag on a daily chart with volume coming in. Uh, so everything looks amazing for a move on NEO. Um, and just to kind of go over, and it's not just NEO, Tesla looking really good as well. Um, again, all part of the EV space, uh, it's trendy. It looks like it wants to hit the 750. Lee is looking good as well. Uh, another Chinese EV stock it had a bounce right here. It's, it's, it's bouncing uh, around the 50. And we also have XPEV, also looking really, really good, bouncing off that 50 moving average. So things are looking really, really good. Um, and that's the reason why I day traded. My, but not, not only day traded, but also invested in my long-term account for a move. Uh, now, if, if, if it breaks 50 with big volume, I think this thing could go and break all-time highs. So far, everything looks great about it. Uh, now, in terms of the day trading opportunity, I did trade it in terms of a second day move uh, based on yesterday's move. There was a decent volume. Also, there was a, a decent amount of volatility on the on play volatility on the options. So I kind of like those things. And it actually was up almost 5% today. <clears throat> so there was definitely an opportunity for day trading. Now, I actually didn't, uh, didn't really day trade it the way I wanted to. Um, I was actually looking for a, a pullback straight to the midpoint around 4480s. Uh, it didn't do that, but I decided to trade it because it was consolidating. It had a really nice consolidation. Uh, it tested the uh, 46 level one, twice, three times, and I felt after this time it was going to go, uh, it was going to pretty much run. So I did buy above 4660, break above 4660, breaking up, up, up around this wedge. Let's stop below uh, this, this low right here. And it started to go, but um, it, it hit this, the 4680s. It started not to look so good. I, and also it was, it was about to be zombie hour time. <clears throat> so <clears throat> I usually like, do not like to take a trade after zombie hour. So when zombie hour hits, I usually like to get out of my position or cut my position. So at this point, uh, because it, the trend didn't look so hot, I decided to cut half, especially after it was zombie hour times, and I added and I raised my stop uh, break below this level right here. So um, break below this level, um, I, you know. So I cut my position in half. If it breaks below this level, I'm out. I'm no longer interested in trading. Uh, but if you kind of like zoom out into what happened, it tested this 46 level again, uh, and it started to kind of it bounced up again. And, and then again, 4660 consolidated and it started to finally trend. 
So it took a while, but this trend was actually beautiful. It was a beautiful trend and it actually tested order 48. So this would have been an amazing trade to kind of hold, you know, kind of like an all day type of hold. It would have been an amazing trade, but again, I, it was all about the timing. I didn't get the right timing, um, but it was consolidating and consolidating. And, and honestly, I think this is the reason why day trading is also very difficult because you could kind of tell that uh, algos were manipulating the price and they're kicking, they're taking out all the shares. So whoever, you know, put a stop below that, which was me at first, but I'm sure there was other traders that did that. They stopped those people out, took their shares and they, they decided to let it go. So a lot of this consolidation is just, People loading, uh, in, in my opinion, either law institutions, algos, they're loading because I think NEOs is going to make a big move pretty soon. Uh, so overall, even though I did take a loss, uh, again, all based on my risk management, it was a small loss. It was nothing big. That was all based on my, uh, my, my risk parameters. I did invest in my long-term account. I am up over, over 4%, actually close to 5% of my long-term account. Uh, and I'm going for a bigger move. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that if, if it breaks 50 with large volume, um, I think it could break us uh, the all time highs and we could get a move to uh, maybe 70s, 80s, even even higher. So and again, it's based on the chart. So if you look at the trend, the trend is holding. There's nothing that says right here that the trend is going to stop. Um, and it's not just Neo. Again, it's not just Neo. Tesla, Tesla, another EV stock is just looking amazing. So actually. This is a similar pattern that I'm looking at. If you look at Tesla, had a really uh, wedge bull flag in the daily, and after it broke out, it just went bananas. So that's what I'm looking at for at, for Neo. So now that it has a it had a consolidation, it break this 50 with with volume. Hopefully, it also goes bananas. So uh, again, I'm not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment and learning purposes only. Now, uh, the next stock that I want to cover is Alibaba stock. So let's kind of go over it because I did day trade that stock. Um, you guys are familiar with the news. Uh, the government is uh, cramming, uh, is actually, uh, what do you, what's the best word for me to say it? Uh, well, they, uh, they're pretty much just putting a lot of regulation on these large Chinese tech companies who are pretty much monopolizing a lot of these, the industry. So they're, they're, they're climbing down on them. I guess that might be a good word to say. Um, and there were pretty much Alibaba had a nasty sell off and, and it broke literally over 10%, down over 10% on, on this day, which is, uh, the day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Uh, so, but you know, it, it was kind of overdone in a way it was overdone. So it presented a lot of opportunities for long-term investors and traders to kind of start buying those dips. So once it broke below that 25, it started to kind of bounce. So today I was looking for a continuation of that bounce. Now, let me show you guys. There you go. This is a little bit easier to kind of see. So yes, so yesterday had a nice bounce. Actually had a nice bounce since the 28th, which was Monday. Uh, so Monday had a, a little bounce. Tuesday had another bounce. And today I felt like that bounce was going to continue. So now I didn't want to buy too high because there was this, 9 EMA on the daily chart. And I felt that was going to be short-term resistance. So the best way that I wanted to trade is was to wait for a move to the midpoint. And as you guys all know, midpoint is the place where I like to enter my positions. Uh, that gives me a really good high risk reward area to get in. Also a high probability trade. So I like to get in the midpoint. That's just me. I like to get into the midpoint on my first trades. Uh, except Neo because there was a really nice consolidation in that one. So yeah, that was a little bit different, but overall majority of my trades, I like to get in on the midpoint. So it sold off pretty hard, even though there was some pretty major support at 240, it literally broke off below that and it literally just sold off. It actually went red for the day, but the midpoint was right there at 235. There was a lot of support, not only the options, but also in the midpoint. Era, it literally bounced off and it took it uh, took my, my profits at 237.50. So that was a really, really nice trade. Really, really good profit. Way more than doubled my, my risk reward for that compared to the NEO loss. Uh, so I was very, very happy with the trade. Now, overall, BABA and what it does, uh, who knows? I, I think it might consolidate. There is this uh, gap right here. So there might be an opportunity for a gap fill. 
Um, I think if it hits 250, there might be some additional profit taking there, but I think the gap may fill pretty soon in the next couple of days. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, so that's pretty much with Baba. Now I also day trade Airbnb. So let me go over that really quickly. Um, Airbnb, if you look at the uh, daily charts, again, this, this company's went um, IPO on uh, December 10th. So it's a recent IPO. Uh, hope you guys are familiar with Airbnb. I've used it several times. I love the service. I think it's great. Uh, but I also believe the stock is currently overvalued. Um, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But it did have a nice move, you know, on, on December 16th and a pullback to a support here, which is 150. So after several days of selling off, it had a kind of like a wick, wick candle, like there was some absorbing, like people were buying these dips. And I thought that there was gonna be a second day continuation of that, of that move off that 150 bounce. So pretty much like you guys know, I was looking to buy the midpoint and that's pretty much what it did. Again, I felt like there was buying some dip buying right here and there might be a second day move. Uh, I did buy the midpoint and I was actually looking to get take profits at 150, but as soon as it started to kind of break, break below the midpoint again, I felt like, you know what? I don't know if this is going to work out. Let me put my stop at below at low days and I got stopped on the rest. So uh, it was a small loss. Um, or even though I had two losses, one on Neo and one on Airbnb, my win on Alibaba stock. I weighed all the losses and I still was profitable for a day. So I was very, very happy. That's the reason why risk to reward is so important. You wanna make sure when you risk some money in the stock market that you're compensated um, by the, the reward. So you wanna make sure that you're, whatever you're risking is worth the risk. You know, The profit is worth the risk that you're willing to take. So two to one or three to one risk to reward is what I always look for. Uh, so that's the reason why I was able to become profitable, even though I took two losses on, on day trading today. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me all those questions down below. Let's continue the discussions on, on what would you guys think. Let me know what you guys think about new stock. Do you think it continue to run? Do you think it's gonna, uh, it's not, do you think the trend is gonna break? What do you guys think? Uh, because again, a lot of the, the whole sector, EV, Chinese EV sector, including Tesla, they're looking pretty solid. But I want your opinion. Please let me know down below and I'll be more than happy to answer all your questions. Uh, you guys will hear from me soon. Take care, guys.